KTSM presents the first installment of a three part series. It documents how drug cartels are sowing terror in Juarez neighborhoods and making their presence felt in El Paso and southern New Mexico. Good evening. I'm Carla Draxler and thank you so much for joining us tonight. We want to warn our viewers that the story contains very graphic images. Border reports Julian Andres Sendis has been on assignment for the past three weeks and joins us in the studio. And Julian, the first question that comes to mind is why you decided to do the story because the subject matter is as dark as it gets for a television audience. Carla, we always say El Paso and Juarez are one community separated by a river. I believe that and I want to bring attention to the tragedy befalling our portion of the community south of the border wall. Thousands of Juarenses have been murdered in the past three years. The official story is that most of them were drug traffickers. But I spent a month in the colonias of Juarez, talking to families, going to crime scenes. I found that many young people were killed just for trying to buy drugs or for owing money to people who got them addicted to drugs in the first place. Our KTSM studio is a mile away from half a dozen dispensaries in Sunland Park, New Mexico. Anyone 21 and over can legally purchase marijuana without social stigma or the threat of losing his life. The cartels are running rampant in the less affluent areas of Juarez, and as you will see, also very much active in El Paso and in southern New Mexico. Julian, a lot of crime scenes, a lot of disturbing images. Again, we are warning our viewers that the story contains some very, very graphic images. Carla, what our viewers will see today is exactly what our brothers and sisters in Juarez witness on a daily basis. They are finding severed heads in public parks, arms and legs in trash bags, bodies wrapped in blankets outside their homes or next to schools. We are blurring the images. They do not have that luxury. They see this horror unfiltered, and that is not fair. Julian, thank you. And before we show you the story, we want to advise our viewers once again. There are some extremely graphic images that will be shown in the first part of Cartel's death denial in a region under siege. Viewer discretion is advised. This is Portal del Valle. It is a Juarez neighborhood less than a mile south of the Rio Grande and the U.S. border wall. It was here that Griselda Casillas' 19-year-old son, Christian, went missing as he walked home after work just a few weeks ago. He disappeared on a Tuesday, and on Saturday they dumped a body three, four blocks from my house. I went to see if it was my son, but it wasn't him. I filed a report Tuesday, September 5th. On Wednesday, the next day, they began finding graves two to three blocks from my house. Over the next two days, Juarez police would pull eight bodies from the ground, although Griselda's son was not among them. It was just the latest gruesome find in a border city where many live in terror of the drug cartels. Several heads have been left inside coolers in neighborhood parks. Dismembered bodies abandoned in tubs in the parking lot of apartment buildings. Individuals have been killed, their bodies stuffed into storm drains. Bodies wrapped in blankets have been placed in front of elementary schools. Other areas of Mexico, like Michoacán and Zacatecas, have recorded more homicides than Juarez this year. This summer, the state of Chihuahua, where Juarez is located, led Mexico in the number of atrocities. Crime experts say intimidation tactics between rival gangs become acts of terror when bodies and body parts are left in neighborhoods and public places to make residents afraid to talk to the police. This also exposes everyone in the neighborhoods, including children, to the carnage. A survey released by the Mexican government shows 40% of adults in Juarez have witnessed a shooting or have heard shots in the past three months. 70% say they do not feel safe in their city. It is rough. It is ugly here. I have seen assaults. And on this corner, I once found a guy dismembered. In the last few years, the Colonia Azteca has become a disaster. It's ugly. What is leaders say 9 out of 10 homicides in their city are drug related? The important part is they don't mess with civilians. These are problems among gangs. There are one or two affected that we grieve for, but the violence is among the gangs. 
But during numerous interviews in the past month in Juarez's working class neighborhoods, places known as colonias, Border Report ran into instances of law abiding citizens routinely witnessing the bloodshed. One of the worst things I have seen is a shooting where two children were murdered. People came, shot the father dead, and there were two children in the car. They also killed the children. Oscar Maines is a former Chihuahua police criminalistics expert. He now runs a nonprofit for victims of crime. They try to shield the children of the exposure to that violence. Probably they need to, at school, deal with the school psychologists to talk to the kids so they don't develop any, you know, nightmares, issues, trauma, post-traumatic service or something like that. They need to address this, this problem. People need to, to continue living. So if you see extreme violence, people tend to uh, avoid going out, but they need to uh, get food, go, go to work. They need to take the kids to school. So we tend to adapt. Unfortunately, when we adapt, we stop putting pressure on government authorities to deal with the issue. And the authorities just, you know, just say, okay, it's, it's, it's a fight among criminal groups, and they leave it at that, and then society accepts it, and, and it's a descending spiral of, of violence. So we need to, as a society, we need to uh, put pressure on authorities to, to, to confront the problem. That is easier said than done. Residents of the colonias that comprise at least 50% of Juarez are the ones forced to live with the terror. It is there that most shootings happen. It is there that most bodies are dumped. When people go to the police, sometimes they feel authorities are too quick to label the murders drug-related. That's as if saying the victims got whatever they had coming. Carla Valenzuela's son has been missing for nearly two months. He left work at a fast food restaurant to hang out with a friend. This while his girlfriend finished her shift at a jewelry store. I am not blind. I cannot say he was perfect. He smoked marijuana. What I can assure you is that he only consumed. I know because he lived with me. He did not sell drugs. You can tell. That is obvious. In 2021, Mexico legalized recreational marijuana. Carla had an argument with her son because he started smoking. Carla suspects the two young men in their early 20s ventured into downtown Juarez, an area known as El Centro, and were abducted by gang members. They may have thought they were going to resell the drugs, or they refused to buy harder drugs. The cartels are currently pushing sales of crystal meth in Juarez. Carla said she located her son's cell phone in a second-hand store, but the police refused to go and get it. Today we have seen but a glimpse of the terror the cartels are inflicting on working class areas of Juarez. But does that mean that U.S. visitors should stay away? Does that mean that American lawmakers are justified when they call for the cartels to be designated as terrorist organizations? Stay tuned for the next installment of Cartels, Dead, Denial in a Region Under Siege. The second part of Cartel's Death Denial in a Region Under Siege will air tomorrow night, and you can watch the first part and read more on our website, ktsm.com.